Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, Innovative Design and Manufacturing of Cylinder Heads. I am Amanda Harmoning, and I will be moderating today's event. I am an admin assistant here at AERA, and joining me from the AERA team is Rob Monroe. Hey, everyone. Yeah, Rob Monroe here. I look after membership and technical development over at AERA, and both Amanda and I will be in the background to help answer any questions you may have throughout the webinar. We're going to leave some time at the end uh, so that the folks over at AFR can answer any questions that you have. Amanda's going to show you how to use that control panel that's up in the upper right part of your screen. Uh, she'll show you how to use that questions box, so please feel free to put any questions you may have in there, whether it be about AERA or some questions to give to the folks over at AFR after the webinar. Please do so, and we'll, uh, we'll get those over to them. So right now, I'll go back to Amanda, and she'll show you how to use that questions box. All right, a couple quick housekeeping slides, as Rob said. First off, there's a couple different ways to get into today's webinar. One is via the telephone. If you do this, please make sure you enter the access code and audio pin. This just allows us to make sure that there's no background noise during the presentation and keeps everybody muted. Um, the second option is to listen in with your computer's mic and speakers. Again, just make sure you have that appropriate button selected and um, it will keep you muted. Uh, a couple other things to know, that little orangish box with the arrow in it, that is your grab tab. You can use that to collapse and expand your control panel at any time. This allows you to get it out of the way while you're watching the presentation and pull it back out if you got any questions you need to ask. And that brings us to the questions box. Um, if at any time you have any questions, comments, anything for us, go ahead and enter those in there. And as Rob mentioned, he and I will be in the background getting some of those answered and taken care of, and then we will do a Q&A at the end with AFR. I will hand things back over to Rob now, and we'll get going with today's presentation. Excellent, thanks, Amanda. So just, I've got a couple slides to go through real quick before we get on with today's presentation. For those of you that may be joining us for the first time and you don't know who AERA is, we're a nonprofit association, and we've been serving engine builders since 1922, so we've been around a very long time. Uh, our main role here at AERA is to help provide our members with technical engine information and specifications. Our technical department has four full-time techs. Uh, we can provide you with your information from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Central Time, and we are, we are open Monday through Friday. So, you know, we represent uh, parts manufacturers, distributors, schools, and government agencies, and we're over 2,000 members worldwide. Now, AERA also helps get involved in our industry by providing uh, networking opportunities as well. So we've got tech and skills conferences, we've got school conferences and trade shows, kind of like this old picture shows here back in 1926. I mean, all of these folks are rubbing elbows and learning from each other. And essentially, that's basically what we're doing today is we're getting together to network. Um, you know, we're learning from each other and with AFR's presentation, we're hoping that you can take some of these ideas and uh, bring them back into the shop afterwards and use those. So um, speaking of trade shows, you're gonna see AERA coming up uh, at the Apex show, November 5th through 8th, as well as at the SEMA show. So you can look for us in booth number 4483 at Apex and booth number 23724, and that'll be at SEMA. So we've got some new features to show you with Process Pro. Uh, we've got a couple new member benefits we'd like to uh, show you as well. So please do drop by if you're coming to those shows, and we'd be more than happy to, uh, to show you that stuff. Uh, some of you might remember, um, we do have our quarterly membership giveaway program. So uh, we gave away a total seal piston ring filer in the third quarter, and that went to B&K Racing in North Bloomfield, Ohio. So they were the winner of that really cool uh, piston ring filer. So thank you to Total Seal for your help on that one. And our fourth quarter prize package, that's a high pressure oil gallery cleaning gun here from the folks from Goodson, as well as the super scraper set, the magnetic finger, as well as the magnetic washer removal set. So some really cool uh, prizes there to win, all from Goodson Tools and Supplies. So all you really need to be is a member of AERA. This includes new members who join us from October 1st through to December 30th as well as members who renew in, the, in that quarter as well. So if you're an existing member and your renewal is coming up from October 1st to December 30th, your name also goes into that prize package for that draw. So uh, we look forward to the drawing of that December 30th, and all this stuff is all shipped to you freight prepaid. So 
it's a really cool program. Uh, for those of you that are on today, um, in the mail, you're going to be receiving your 2019-2020 Contingency Connection Coupon Booklet. And inside that booklet, uh, there's all kinds of good coupons in there for you to get discounts from manufacturers. But I want to draw your attention to one of the coupons in there, which is AERA's coupon. So $50 off of Process Pro uh, for your subscription or renewal. So take advantage of that. That's free money there for you to use. So it, it is there. Also, if you want to become a new member of AERA, we can immediately take $75 off a membership by using your Contingency Connection coupon as well. So again, free money. So take advantage of that program. It's there for you. Just as an example, uh, we've got our membership. $399 is your typical U.S. shop, one to three employees as an example. So don't forget, you know, if you take advantage of that $75 coupon, you're only $324 for the year which works out to $27 per month. And we do have a monthly payment program. We don't charge any admin fees for it, so you can get uh, set up with us for as little as $27 per month. So it, it is a great program. So take advantage of those discounts, and it's there to help save you some money. All right, well, let's get on to with today's webinar, uh, Innovative Design and Manufacturing of Cylinder Heads. And this is from the folks over here at Airflow Research. And I'll just mention, just a heads up, in case we lose our live feed with AFR during the presentation, it'll only be due to the potential rolling power blackouts that are happening in California right now. So if this happens, uh, we will uh, we'll reschedule with them to, uh, to get a good recording and we'll make sure that we get everybody a link for the, uh, for the presentation. So just in case things go out today, that's the only reason why. We'll make sure everybody's all looked after and we'll get this presentation to, to everybody there. So. Um, joining us today, uh, we've got the Airflow Research, Air AFR President Rick Sperling is with us. We've got Director of Engineering Chris Sperling. We've got the Director of Manufacturing Chris Paul, as well as Director of Marketing and Sales Tim Tokarian. So welcome, guys. Um, I want to thank you for your time today to share some of what goes on at Airflow Research. So looking forward to your presentation, and uh, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Rob and you folks out there participating in today's webinar uh, covering cylinder head design and manufacturing. As Rob mentioned, I'm Tim Torricarian, Director of Marketing and Sales. I also have Rick, Chris Sperling, and um, Chris Paul joining us on the uh, presentation today. At this point in time, I'd like to just turn over the floor to Rick Sperling, our president, who'll give you a brief overview of our company history and our involvement in the automotive aftermarket industry. Uh, good morning or afternoon, everyone, depending upon your time zone. Um, I'm Rick Sperling, president of uh, AFR, and uh, thank you, Rob and Amanda, for uh, inviting us to do this presentation webinar. Uh, let me give you a, a quick history of AFR. My dad, Ken Sperling, and Warren Brownfield started AFR in 1970. So uh, next year will be our 50th anniversary. Um, in the first few decades of AFR in the 70s and 80s, AFR worked with most of the uh, top pro stock and NASCAR drivers and race teams. And then uh, in the late 80s, we started our transition into manufacturing our own products and refining five axis CNC porting, you know, to supply cylinder heads to the everyday consumer at an affordable price with uh, industry, industry leading quality. You know, our, our history is important um, but what's more important is what AFR does today to stay relevant and how we stay ahead of uh, changing times. So uh, we keep up with today's fast-paced world by utilizing you know, state-of-the-art machinery and equipment with robotics, automation that's capable to run lights out after hours and on weekends. We use laser scanners for uh, QC inspection and reverse engineering <clears throat> new products. Uh, we use uh, CFD software to supplement cylinder head design, port design, water jacket design, thermal efficiencies, and you know uh, anything that needs to be analyzed. We use the latest CAD CAM solutions. Uh, we practice continuous improvement, you know, commonly known as lean. And every employment, every employee in all departments go through lean certification here at AFR. We're really committed to that process. Uh, we're in the process of ISO 9001 certification by the year end 2019. Uh, AFR has multiple dyno test engines and 
three company cars that all products are tested on before it's released to the consumer. Uh, most importantly, we have a highly skilled, trained, highly trained and skilled team here at AFR. You'll see and hear about all these things in greater details as this presentation continues. I'll now hand this presentation over to uh, Chris Sperling, our Director of Engineering, to go over AFR's uh, design processes and philosophies that we use and follow here. Thank you. Thank you, Rick, and thank you everybody for joining us today. My name is Chris Berling, Director of Engineering Technology. Uh, I've been with Airflow Research for about 15 years now. Um, AFR's design process starts with defining our project goals. Uh, as mentioned, we use a software suite of the latest technologies, and we use this to take a ground-up approach to cylinder head design. Uh, this allows us to ensure maximum performance and unmatched quality. Once flow, dyno, and track tested, AFR's state-of-the-art manufacturing center comes into play. Uh, customers receive accurate, repeatable, and G-force inducing results time after time. Um, in today's presentation, we'll be going over some of the steps AFR takes during its development process, uh, the machining steps we take to provide consistent results, and the quality measures we incorporate throughout the entire process. Uh, one of the cool things you can see here on this slide, the AFR Camaro over on the right-hand side, that's one of the cars that we test all of our products on, our LS3 products. Uh, I actually take that out to LS Fest West, uh, NMCA Autocross, and compete in the Autocross series there. Also take it out to various track events throughout Southern California, road course, whatever it may be. Um, so a little bit of fun side story there. Um, but now on to the real fun stuff of port development. So with that, um, project requirement dictates our design from port size, uh, flow goals, valves, springs, and more. Um, this sheet right here starts at the beginning of every project where we kind of lay out what are going to be our design parameters for each cylinder head. Um, some of these design parameters end up uh, dictating our port development design, our casting design, water jacket design, uh, and also give us some goals to achieve throughout this design process. Um, after defined casting and port development start in conjunction. Um, for our port design, we use a combination of old school and new school techniques in what AFR likes to term our digital porting services, or DPS. Uh, using our years of industry experience and CAD knowledge, ports are created using splines and lofted surfaces. Uh, valve size determined throat diameter and port entrance location is defined by manifold port locations and sizes. Uh, using a combination of target cubic inch and runner size, MCSA is calculated for the product. Items like water jacket, spring pad depth, bolt and push rod locations also prevent, present obstacles that will affect port design that can be managed throughout reviewing flow path and CFD. Items, are, items also reviewed are tumble and swirl to ensure efficient combustion. With the initial port design, we then modify spline lengths and radius to perform our DPS. In a matter of days, we have 30 plus iterations which we can then use to test the best results on. Um, generally, throughout our port development process, areas that we like to focus on during these iterations uh, are the valve job, the throw, the short term. Um, obviously, a port is the entire combination of all of these things, um, but these areas are especially critical to improve performance. Um, from these port designs, tool paths are generated and machined and flowed to correlate real world results to historical CFD data allowing AFR to utilize past treads and speeding up the port development process. Uh, we apply this method very similar to how a cylinder head porter would grind, putty, and flow, but in a much quicker time frame. At the same time as our port development is taking place, casting design is well underway. From our standard three-quarter inch head deck to improve white pattern, AFR focuses on what is important to the enthusiast and engine builder, quality products that perform. In addition to utilizing CFD for port design, AFR also incorporates the technology to determine, thermal, to, to determine thermal heat transfer for improved water jacket cooling properties. All castings are analyzed virtually to ensure pr proper wall thickness, bolt engagement, and for structural integrity. Uh, after the casting design is completing, completed, machine features are defined. Uh, we design our products with valve to guide clearances of 1,000 to 2,000 on the intake. 1,000 2 tenths to 2,000 2 tenths on the exhaust, 
and 1,005 tenths to 2,005 tenths for pink and L exhaust. Uh, our valve seats are interlocked where possible, uh, where one seat is machined into the other. This is for improved seat engagement to the cylinder head with a 5 to 7 thou press fit. For valve train geometry, AFR uses both mid lift and max load at center line depending upon the project needs. Uh, built available clearances and string loads. Using SOLIDWORKS motion study, AFR verifies white pattern across the lift range in both scenarios. Uh, AFR designs for the narrowest possible white while providing optical geometry for each application. Uh, one of the cool things, if you guys want to focus on this cylinder head right here, we'll actually be going and showing a physical mock-up that we performed from this virtual test right here. Uh, and we'll go over those results a little bit later. Um, in addition to our virtual mock-up, AFR also verifies your cylinder head. We'll work with all stock components from valve covers to intake manifolds to rocker arms. We also verify the casting design machining operation tolerances, and components for durability, stress levels, and failure points to ensure products will last out in the field using SOLIDWORKS simulation. Once all products have, product components have been verified virtually, AFR uses 3D printed SLS technology to double check wall thicknesses, water jacket clearances, bolt hole features, and more. After approved, we order castings generated from our design concepts and begin our machining operations to create physical parts for mock-ups and real-world tests. Upon completion of design and machining, all parts are verified in our mock-up facility. White patterns, push rod clearances, piston to valve, and more are checked on a block, confirming what was seen virtually. So this right here is the intake white pattern from that virtual test which we saw earlier. Uh, if we go to the next slide, you can see the exhaust white pattern. Uh, very similar to the test results we saw virtually where it was narrow and centered over the tip of the valve. Um, with our tight tolerances and dedication to quality, AFR uses both an RA7 Romer arm and gantry CMM to reverse engineer, verify new product development, and ensure in-process quality. On new product development gets CMM to the hundred thousandth to ensure accurate machine features and more complex components are scanned on our RA7 to the thousandth. Um, we'll have a quick video here showing some verification steps we do offline. This ensures here that the tool doesn't crash into the part, into the fixture, uh, and then as well we can compare this machine surface here to our designed port from CAD, uh, make sure that we're going to be in our accepted tolerance for our port design. Um, thank you very much for your time today, everybody. I'm now going to pass it off to Chris Paul, who will go over some of our manufacturing steps and quality steps throughout that process. Hi, this is Chris Paul, Director of Manufacturing here at AFR. Our commitment over the, my 28-year career here at AFR has been manufacturing the highest quality, best performing cylinder head and manifold to money to buy. Although our manufacturing process is impressive, it's the stuff behind the scenes that actually makes our product better than others. Our desire to continue to improve both our product as well as our profit process is what keeps us, our product alive and changing with the times. Between our in-process inspection in all departments at all times, percentages of all production runs inspected to CAD to maintain consistency, our rigorous tool maintenance program that allows us to provide better quality and more consistent parts, and daily, weekly, and monthly inspections done on all machines and fixtures, we are confident that we have developed a manufacturing process that has provided a very consistent product we are proud to provide to our customers. Our machining process consists of multiple three, four, and five axis machines in order to achieve the finished product we offer. One of our biggest assets is the ability to mass produce cylinder heads on any of our four horizontal machining centers. Having two Mazak FH6800 and two NH6300 mooring machines linked to a 42 pallet pool system, this gives us the ability to manufacture any of our products when needed. Having 42 pallets linked to two NH6300 mooring machines provides us the ability to run these machines unattended when AFR employees are not present while running anywhere from up to 42 different programs at any given time. 
These machines are equipped with a broken tool detection system that quarantines a pallet when a broken tool is identified, changes to a redundant tool, and resumes production if additional pallets are available. These same machines are equipped with a Renishaw probing system that allows us to probe our fixtures and tombstones for accuracy within two thou over a 20 inch tombstone. Another huge asset that we have are 15 five axis pause machines. This is also a process we developed allowing us the ability to run any of the given five axis programs on any of our 15 machines with minimal changeover. These machines are critical for maintaining tool life so consistency can be seen in the flow and the performance of the product. These machines are also equipped with a Renishaw probing system that allows us to check accuracy within our fixture up to 2,000 over a 24-inch surface. This same system allows us to use these probes to gather data when needed in the manufacturing process to improve or troubleshoot problems when needed. Flow testing is done on a daily basis to maintain consistency with our products as well. Valve jobs are just as critical as port design when it comes to the performance of flow. We have found the Newen Contour and Epoch single point valve machines to provide us the best results for our cylinder heads. These same machines have a touch screen that allow us to make changes on the fly and have proven to be a valuable tool when designing or improving current valve job designs. When checking accuracy or concentricity of a valve job, we found it to be best to be confirmed on the CMN. However, However, other gauges are used to spot check to confirm what the end user may or may not be using to inspect their own parts. Although some of the last departments aren't as exciting, they are equally as important or valuable to our process. 100% of all of our heads are checked on an air decay or pressure check machine confirming their quality and the integrity of the casting. 100% of all heads are washed, deburred, and inspected to make sure they meet AFR standards. 100% of all heads are hand assembled to meet our customers' requirements and then inspected to make sure they meet our AFR standards. And 100% of all products are inspected by our final inspection department to make sure they meet our AFR standards one last time before boxing. Here's a short video showing some of the machines in action, and then I will hand this back off to Tim to wrap things up. overview of our manufacturing processes and all the different machines on our production floor. Now that you've learned a little bit about our design and manufacturing uh, processes here at Airflow Research, I wanted to switch gears a little bit and give you a short overview of uh, our different product offerings. Now one of the main advantages of our cylinder heads is the strength and the dur durability of our castings, which are backed by a lifetime a uh, limited lifetime warranty uh, to the original purchaser. Now, many of our cylinder heads are available with one of three different port levels or surface finishes. Uh, the main difference between our street, race ready, and competition level porting is the amount of step over uh, between each pass. It's basically, uh, in machinist terms, you know, the distance between each pass uh, on those surfaces. Uh, as you can see here, the street has uh, 
the widest gap between passes, resulting in a slightly rougher surface than, say, our competition uh, porting level, which is a much finer or smoother surface there. Now, we do offer cylinder heads for both small block, big block, Chevy and Fords, plus a full line of LS cylinder heads, uh, whether you're using a cathedral port or rectangular port uh, intake system. In addition, we also sell many complementary components, uh, such as intake manifolds, stud girdles, valve covers, gaskets, and um, all the replacement parts that you would need to refresh in your heads. Now, another unique feature about our cylinder heads is that every piece that goes through our production floor is labeled with this barcode that you can see there on the bottom right of the cylinder head on the end plate. Um, this barcode serves two purposes internally. The first is for internal tracking, so we can see where any given sales order or work order is on the shop floor for any given time. This allows our sales people uh, to look up the information and give updates and statuses to our customers over the phone um, to let them know when they're going to be ready to ship. In addition, uh, when it comes to refreshing your cylinder head, whether it's the end user, the engine builder, even the machine shop, this barcode is basically the DNA of the cylinder head, and it will tell us every single component that your cylinder head left our facility with. It also includes any machining options that it may have received, such as uh, steam holes for a small block Chevy uh, being put on the factory GM 400 block, or if it got any sort of milling down to a smaller chamber. It'll also give us the chamber volume, which in addition is stamped on the deck surface of the cylinder head. Now, many of our products are approved across many different sanctioning boards here in the country, uh, from NHRA, NMCA, NMRA, uh, across a plethora of classes. In addition, uh, we work with many drivers in many different disciplines of motorsports, whether that's drag racing, to circle track, or even pro touring cars that compete in Optima's Ultimate Streetcar Challenge, or the Good Guys Autocross Series uh, that goes across the United States throughout the year. In addition, you can even find our products on several off-road vehicles now. Uh, then over the last few years, uh, we've gotten our foot in the door with some of the uh, professional drifters uh, competing in Formula D. Uh, these last two disciplines we've noticed tend to appeal a little bit more to the younger enthusiast or gearhead uh, compared to some of the more traditional motorsports in our area. Uh, besides just working with drivers, uh, we also work with several organizations um, that run events across the country and we are proud sponsors of Holly's LS Fest West and East where we are the official cylinder head for both series. Uh, we are also a nationwide sponsor for NMCA, NMRA, drag racing, and autocrossing. We are also uh, a contingency sponsor for both of those series across the country. Uh, then locally, uh, we work with many organizers that put on weekly and monthly events across Southern California. Uh, this pretty much brings us to the end of our presentation today. I'd like to say thank you to everyone and Rob and Amanda over at ARA, and I'd like to turn it back over to them so we can get into the Q&A. Sure. Well, well, thank you, guys. That great presentation. Um, we do have quite a few questions that have come in. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take some questions. And if, if so many questions come in that we don't have time to answer, like I say, we'll, uh, we'll get those over to you, and uh, we'll give you the contact, and then we'll let you answer those directly if we run out of time. But... Um, one of the first questions that come, has come in is uh, they're asking, what tool do you find the most helpful for port development? Uh, this is Chris Sperling here. The tool that we find most helpful for port development, in all honesty, is intuition. Um, having a, a good understanding of port flow is not something that comes naturally to everybody. Um, but with that intuition and utilizing the tools that you have, um, in data gathering through full benches with CFM, Tumble, and Swirl, uh, and then Dino results. Really what you end up getting to is utilizing that intuition and those additional tools is really the best way 
to get to your end goals with work development in the quickest time possible. All right. Um, okay, here's a good one. Um, should the surface of the port be a mirror-like smooth finish or polished? Uh, to be honest with you, that, you know, it really depends on the product uh, and it depends on the port design. This is Chris Ball, by the way. I, you know, I've been with Airflow for 28 years. Uh, I originally started as, as a hand cylinder head porter. Uh, so when you kind of look at how things have evolved over the years, um, they, they definitely change. You know, there, there was extrude honing, which was kind of a big old school, you know, thought process where you, you kind of uh, pass media back and forth through a port and it would kind of create this better surface and it'd be extremely smooth and whatnot. But ultimately, you know, getting back to the question is that, you know, what we have found is that in our comp surfaces that are the smoothest, they're typically a little bit on the bigger side. Um, they definitely yield a slightly better uh, result, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the smoother the finish, the better the flow, because it really ultimately comes back to the design and how it works with the valve and the cubic inch and, and you know the overall uh, characteristics. Of the Great question. Okay. All right. Uh, we've had another question come in. Do you work at all with any steel or cast iron heads? <laughs> Not if we don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this, this is pretty cool. So in my 28 years when I started, you know, it was pretty common for us to uh, to, to work on cast iron. Uh, you know, and, and even though you know we were first or you know, part of the first aftermarket uh, aluminum cylinder head, it was still pretty important that to get in contact with those cast iron heads. But uh, yeah, we currently we currently don't. You know, work on anything like that. We just uh, mainly support and manufacture our own. Okay, so uh, this next question kind of leads to that same kind of thing. Uh, what's the average lead time to build a custom set of heads? So that it, you know, obviously it depends on, on what the custom options are. Um, you, you know, some of our off-the-shelf, more common stuff. You know, we can deliver in 24 to 48 hours um, with some mild. Uh, um, Customization, whether it be a, a slight mill or some steam holes or something like that, we can ship it within uh, within 20, uh, 72 hours. Um, you know, and, and then if, if we were to do a complete custom from from uh, you know from the ground up, meaning that we had to machine the castings from a raw state all the way through, port it, PC it, and get it out the door. Um, we're this time of year we're typically shipping within two weeks. Okay. Yeah. No, that's good. Um, another question that's come in here is, uh, what's the average scrap rate or defects found in your process? How much, how much stuff do you have to, uh, melt down and do again? So part of our in process inspection is, is teaching all of our employees what the AFR standard is from the very beginning. Um, and, and one of those is that you know, we spend a tremendous amount of time developing our products so that we can minimize our scrap rate. Um, you know, the only scrap rate that we typically see is in the very first operation, and that usually is identifying anything that we're getting that is not meeting our standards from the foundry uh, um, standpoint. Uh, that percentage is less than 1%. So we catch it really early in our process and then have zero, you know, zero problems after that. Now, therefore, that's that's one, one of the deciding factors on why we were able to become, you know, the first cylinder head company to offer an a, a, a offer a lifetime warranty on casting to the original purchaser. All right. Um, what in process inspection does AFR perform? Um, so there's a, it's a, a plethora of uh, inspections. Again, you know, we teach. From the very get-go, we teach everybody uh, here what the AFR standard is. The AFR standard is basically, you know, we want this thing not only to perform as we say it's going to perform, but we want to make sure that it actually looks even better than it performs. So, you know, we treat it like a piece of jewelry. We want you to take it out of the box, look at it, and go over it to make sure that it looks just as good as it's going to perform on the engine. Uh, doing that, we teach all of our operators to obviously look at every you know operation that happened before and after them to make sure that we're giving it you know the best possible scenarios 
that you can go out the door looking as perfect as possible. We use a lot of uh, thread gauges, bore mites, surface finish uh, or profilometers uh, to check, you know, accuracies. Uh, CMM is used on a regular basis, uh, flow, pressure check. You know, there's a variety of different in-process inspections. When in doubt, we'll always take it back to another uh, uh, another uh, quality department to have it thoroughly inspected if needed. Okay, super. Um, here's one of the more technical questions that's come in. It's how much do you rely on CFD analysis and design? For CFD analysis, um, in the current state, it's still a learning phase for us. This is a, a somewhat new software. Um, in terms of our current process, I'd say it's about 50-50. Uh, a lot of it we still um, utilize hand, uh, hand ground ports, which we then reverse engineer. Um, we also then take those hand ground ports to uh, learn from CFD how they correlate to the virtual world. So in the current state, I'd say it's about 50-50. Uh, moving forward, uh, I see it more trending towards the CFD side, about 75-25%. All right, no, super. Um, all right, guys, well, like I say, any other questions that we've got, we'll forward to you by email. Uh, we know everybody's busy today, and uh, everybody probably wants to get some work to do in the shop, and we, we appreciate your guys' time as well. And uh, again, uh, great, great presentation. Um, it was great that you guys could put that together for us and, and teach us some of the stuff that goes on at AFR. We will get uh, any of those questions, like I say, that are still coming in. We'll get those over uh, to you by email if you guys answer those ones. And... Um, yeah, I'll, right now what we'll do, it again, thank you guys, appreciate it. And uh, we'll go back over to Amanda, and she's going to have uh, a couple things to go over just to wind things up for us today. All right, thank you again, everybody, for your time today. Um, just a couple things before you go. First off, there will be a record recording sent out to you tomorrow um, that you can use at your disposal. You can email it to other people on staff. You can rewatch at your convenience. If you came in a little late, had to leave a little early, um, it's yours to do with as you wish. Also, when you leave today, there will be a survey that pops up. Please take a moment and fill that out. Let us know how we're doing. If you have any additional questions for us or for AFR, go ahead and put those there and we will get them answered for you. And then lastly, you'll see our contact information is there. You can reach anyone on the AERA team by dialing 815-526-7600. And then you'll see my email and Rob's along with Stephen Cairn from the AERA staff there. Again, thank you everybody for your time and we hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you.